Hey guys and gals, Malkuth1974 back at you with another episode of our Apollo missions. Today we're going to kind of finish off with our Voyager mission, but right now I'm going to show that we are actually launching the next phase to the Duna mission where we have to launch the colony, uh, the colony vessel uh, and a couple more things. we got to actually uh, send the refueler up to and the little rover, remember the rover from the moon that we uh, we had established, so right now this is the colony vessel, we're sending that up, and we'll, we'll put a, a few of those little boxes up here in a second to show you the other ones that we sh we got going, and we'll name them off and give you the names for what they understand or what they are, for we can get them going, and hopefully these will get on their way and we'll be all set. They're actually going to sit in orbit for a little bit again for about uh, maybe a year or so or less than a year before we actually send them on their way. As you can see up there the Voyager probe or as we uh, last episode we actually had the Voyager probe all set and ready to go. So after we get done with this we will cut over to that and we'll start doing a grand tour of Jewel which is uh it's quite fun to do because you, you can use Jewel's moons and everything to help you do gravity assist to other moons so let's uh let's head on over there right now actually so there we go showing us in orbit of Jewel And if you actually look up uh, on the Kerbal Alarm Clock there, we'll see that uh, Kerbal Drez, Kerbal Duna, I actually sent, I'm going to be sending another mission. I want to go check out Drez because it has uh, Drez droids or asteroids in uh, Drez's uh, orbit, and I do want to check that out. And right now we're just trying to get a little bit closer to the first moon on the outer edge of Jewel. Let's just get a little bit closer here. So the purpose of all this is to actually get into orbit, get into particular, not into orbit, but do a, uh, a flyby of the moon, uh, gather some things, uh, science, in this case we'll be gathering some science on pole. And I have to get this under 134,000 uh, there we go. 134,000 meters. So we'll just kind of fly by. I actually had a bug that happened on this very first flyby, and it, I had to redo it. Uh, what happened is, uh, I don't know, they said they would have fixed this whole situation where... Uh, if you have, a, you know, not a huge amount of time compression on a sphere of influence change. Uh, in this case, it was from pole back to drool. And I must have hit the, uh, it must, it, I, I've, I've, I've noticed the bug many, many times. It's just as bad as it used to be. It, it, it's not really fixed. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it <laughs> caused this one little probe that basically got a little bit of a gravity assist, assist, assist to go completely out of uh, the sun's uh, sphere of influence. So and I ended up having to uh, redo it, and then I'm trying to set up for our second moon here. This should be Bop, I believe. There we go. Yep. Yeah entering Bob. So you can see that I'm using the moons themselves as uh, gravity cyst to get me to the other moons where I don't use up all my Delta V. If we look at my Delta V current, I have 1229 MS to, uh, to do this whole basic grand tour of going by these moons, gathering what I can for science and everything else. Uh, a second bug that was actually in my mission controller uh, mod was that I actually had uh, this contract. The contract right now is set up to uh, that it's 
the vessel is older than the contract, which it will not allow you to do uh, certain uh, objectives in the mission controller if that is the case. What ends up happening is that I had the, the mission time set to some ridiculously low number, like a year, and it takes you at least three years to get to Jewel. So uh, I had to actually uh, edit the file, uh, release uh, release an update on the mission controller mod for everybody else can have the benefit of doing this. And now it it gives you, I think, nine years to do the do this uh, Voyager mission, which is plenty of time to actually uh, get it all done. So here we go. We're just setting up our next intercept here on the next moon in Jewel. That should be... what will that be? I can't remember. We'll see when we get there. There we go. Set that up. Time warp. I'm. Tr I'm gonna. Tr it's Tylo. It should be Tylo. Yeah. There we go. Tylo has a very, very heavy gravity. It's the one of the heaviest gravities in Kerbal Space Program for a moon without an atmosphere. It almost takes as much to take off from Tylo as it does to take off from Kerbin, just because of its very high gravity. And I am going to use that to my advantage right here. There we go. I actually, <laughs> I actually kind of uh, just kind of messed with the maneuver node a little bit. And I got my uh, gravity assist to actually get into a flyby of Tylo. So I'm just setting up the actual waypoint here and getting everything going before I can do my burn. I'm going to do it right there. It's only a 59 MS burn, which is pretty cheap for getting into a orbit of this planet. Getting out of it is going to be a little bit more difficult, but we will work on that when we get there. So, okay, there we go. So, yeah, it is a little bit high. I, I like how that looks, how it's a very flat, but you can see how much of a gravity it actually has just by how the maneuver node is being affected by it. Now I'm just trying to lower uh, this right now. If you guys don't know, if uh, if you lower your PE getting into a, a body or into a, a system like this, the farther away you do it, the less it's going to cost you in Delta V. The closer you do it, the more it's going to cost you. So if, you, if I waited until I actually got into the sphere of influence of Tylo on, in that, in that instance, it would have cost me quite a bit of uh, energy to lower my PE to that 100 and th under 134,000 uh, meters and actually, you know, beat the objective. Now, of course, because uh, of the bug I just told you guys about about Mission Controller, uh, even though in the game it's it's updated, I sent Voyager on the original contract that got deleted because it ran out of time and now I'm on the new contract and it's not going to allow any of the flyby uh, objectives to actually tick off because it's looking for a new vessel and this isn't a newer vessel than when it was made so yeah it's just a little bit of a, a bummer but uh, I am doing everything by the book and doing what I can to get as close as I can in these instances in this case, Tylo. A lot of these moons are are absolutely beautiful. It's actually fun to actually do uh, this flyby. We can see how we can actually see how big Tylo is once we get into an orbit of it. It's a very very big moon. It's almost you know it's just like going against our own moon, our own moon in uh, Kerbin. There we go. We're just going to do some science. I noticed on this one that my uh, ionization chamber from Mission Controller doesn't seem to work for a couple of the planets here. And I'm not sh quite sure why that is, but uh, there ain't much I can do about it. So we'll just keep getting science, sending the science out. This is all getting transmitted back to Kerbin, of course, with the uh, the penalty to transmitting it all. But 
you know, some science is better than nothing. Most of the the tree is unlocked for me anyway. It's just I have like uh, four node, the three nodes on the end that are a thousand apiece. I still have to unlock those. I mean, originally in point nine zero, I had every single node unlocked, but they added those new nodes, so I unfortunately didn't have them unlocked. So our next moon, trying to get out of Tylo. And you can tell Tylo is costing us a little bit more of Delta V to actually do this. But I'm going to get a nice little gravity assist here in a second. If we can find it. Just got to set it up. I saw it there. Ah! I saw it. Where is it? Of course, everything in this has been up, uh, sped up a little bit to uh, get the, you know, to get the episode moving along a little bit, to get things going. Here we go. There we go. So I gotta figure out how to get, because right now this is gonna cost. If I do this any normal way, it's gonna cost. Oh, there it is. There it is. But that is. Tylo still. We don't want Tylo. Uh, let's go. Uh, ah, ah, ah. Okay, so there it is. Now look, I'm using Tylo to get me into orbit of the next moon. I'm going to do a gravity assist around it, and it's going to push me more into the inner planets. Thankfully, we're going to go by Lace, so Lace's not going to get in the way. But if I do this correctly, and this burn is actually got to be pretty precise, but we can adjust it after if it's not quite there. Again, it's still going to cost us a lot of Delta V. I only have 790 MS left, or 790 Delta V left. And this one's going to cost us almost 360 of that. So uh, we still have the, this moon to go. And we actually, yeah, see, I missed it a little bit. So I am going to have to adjust this a tad. Let's see if we can get going here. I just have to find out which way I have to go. And my, uh, my maneuver node's not working. This is another bug that has annoyed me forever where you can't place a maneuver node on a, spe a particular spot in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, it's like it's like really, really annoying. So I just used the maneuver node, get rid of it. I just want to know where I need to point to actually uh, to get this set up correctly. So yeah, there we go, we're all set. Nice little uh, gravity assist from Tylo, and we'll get to the next moon. It's not, that is not uh, Lathe, that's the moon outside of Lathe. So here we go, we're gonna fly by Tylo again. We'll just go, we'll just do the flyby again of it. Hello, Tylo. Tylo assists to Val. Oh, yeah, that's Val we're going to next. And there we go. I am still on track. Just have to go around. Nothing's going to get in the way. Now, see, this is one of those situations where a uh, lathe could have completely ruined this situation, but uh, we will fix it if we can. I'm going to do an adjustment here to shrink that PE down to as low as I can. There we go. I actually got it pretty close. I should be able to adjust it just with my burn itself. I don't really have to mess with that anymore. I'm just going to watch it. Get it under 130. There we go. 117. That's close enough. So now we're going to go to BOP. I'm just going to set up another... Uh, timer here on my Kerbo alarm clock and then it's gonna it's gonna click off once we get to the sphere of influence again you don't want to be fast forwarding through the uh, any kind of influence change because yeah it's not very fun so here we go Voyager 2 entering Val sphere of influence Val nice another big planet of course we can't land on any of these we definitely don't have enough Delta V this vessel is not made for that kind of uh, thing. We're just going to send off some more of our precious science. And let's go. There we go. Send them off. I noticed that if you, uh, you guys have probably have noticed this too, but if you, you got to let those uh, antenna actually go through their cycle or you won't be able to do the next 
the next uh, transfer. So you just have to kind of wait for that to uh, finish off. So here we go. Our last, but not least, our last assist to hopefully lathe the final planet, or actually moon, in the jewel system that we need to visit in this area. And... I'm actually going to get it right here. There it is. What a... Aha, so look. Now I just did another gravity assist off of Val. And we're going to get right into... Uh, we're going to actually pop out of the... Uh, pop out a little bit. We're going to go almost all the way back out to Bop. And come back in. going to add an alarm for that. And we're just going to fast forward it. And we're going to go right here. I do not have much Delta V left. And unfortunately, Lathe is going to be a very stubborn, stubborn planet. I really, really wanted to get into orbit of Lathe. And, but I'm, I just don't have enough Delta V. So what I try to do anyway is I say, well, this probe is pretty much done. I think I'm going to enter the atmosphere of Lathe and try to land this somehow. But of course, I am now looking at what it's costing me to do these adjustments. And if you can see right now, to do a uh, an orbit of Lathe would be about 700 uh, Delta V, and I do not have any. I only have 200 left. So I decide I'm going to pounce it right into the right into Lathe. I'm just going to do. Uh, I do have a. Uh, bar and bar a bar on this or whatever the hell it's called uh, the chest the atmosphere and stuff like that so I'll do one last test uh, the Voyager probe will send out one more last science well actually we're gonna get the uh, the orbital science right now that will send that off I think I think I actually forgot to use the uh, the goo container there which was kind of a bummer but oh well what are you gonna do? We're gonna send these off. Try to get as much off as we can. We are at 73, 70. We're actually falling very, very fast. We're gonna close these up, and we're gonna see where we can get here. The last flight of Voyager. Oh, oh, oh! I actually lost control of it. There we go. And. I'm gonna hopefully now. If this had parachutes, that would have been perfect. I just didn't think about uh, actually doing that. I'm just showing that uh, all the contracts are f fulfilled, and I did do everything I needed to do. Got within 134 of every single one of them. I will uh, cheaty cheaty ex uh, finish that with uh, Alt F12 a little bit later. There we go. Let's get everything going. A final flight of Voyager 2. I really did try to save it. You can see my speed. Uh, and I'm, there he goes. I just sent out the last uh, signal that we will ever get back from Voyager. Once it hits that, whatever that liquid is, it's going to be pretty much vaporized. At least that's the plan. But I will try to slow it down a little bit. I have... Uh, what do we got there? 200 and something left, and I only have 100. Yeah, so we don't have enough Delta V to actually slow. I do get close, but it's not quite going to happen. I did I did put effort into this, I'm telling you. I'm like, oh, is it going to do it? I know I'm still at 2,000 meters, falling fast, falling very fast. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And there, bam. We're out of fuel. And no more. No more Voyager. Too bad. I did notice that a couple of my pieces kind of flew off. And we... the This is a... Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what they are and where, where the hell they're going. Because they don't seem to be affected by their aerodynamics at all. Because they're just basically going straight... Oh, it's one of my parts! <laughs> that little thing's a little tough little bugger. I might actually have to look at that and make sure I don't have it too tough in the config settings. And... uh yeah, I don't know what happened here. It just kind of bugged out and just flew straight up. And I, 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 it's like stuck now in a certain spot. 
I've seen this happen before. It won't actually move. So, uh, oops. <laughs> I hope that don't mess my game up. So anyway, guys, uh, we're getting close to the end of the video here. So this is the launcher. This is the newer scientific vessel we're going to be sending out to Drez to go check out the Drez asteroids. Uh, it's 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 a little bit overbuilt, unfortunately, and I think it it might cost me uh, in engineering terms later on. But what I tried to make is basically a a vessel that could land on Drez and land on one of the asteroids. So what we have here is the actual. Uh, probe is the long skinny part, the 1.5 uh, millimeter part or 1.25 millimeter part. And from uh, the stage up, we go through the one part is just the orbital part. There's a small lander in there, which is which has actually got a fatal bug in it. We'll, we'll cover that next episode. And the top part is supposed to be the asteroid uh, lander. But if we take a look, I have 2,445 uh, Delta V left in this vehicle. And one of my major mistakes I actually end up doing is on my burn to Drez, I screw something up, which unfortunately uses up a lot of my Delta V. And, uh, you know, these are mistakes. Even I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> they seem to be happening a lot lately. You guys haven't seen them yet, but uh, especially when I go to do things that I haven't done for a while. So if we look right here, I'm not getting any sort of... Uh, intercept on Drez. And I should be. Now I use Kerbal Alarm Clock to tell me when the most optimal time to launch to uh, one of these planets comes. Unfortunately it doesn't tell you uh, where, what, what's the best, oh there it is. What's the best, uh, I knew it was there, it's just I don't understand. I, something I'm not doing correctly here. I, I'll get the intercept but this is going to cost a lot of Delta V to do it the way I'm doing it right now. And I'm, I'm hugely aware of it. I've only been to Drez once in my whole, my whole Kerbal career. And I forgot out of how much Delta V it actually takes to get into orbit of Drez. It takes a lar a large, large amount of Delta V. Uh, it's not as bad as uh, some of the other planets, but it still it takes a lot. And if you don't have your uh, sphere of influence change set up just right, it will cost even more. So I made a bunch of mistakes on uh, that front, but that'll have to wait until next episode to see what those are. Next episode, we'll get the colony vessel onto Duna. We'll we'll get uh, the uh, refueler on the Duna and we'll get the actual uh, rover on Duna. The rover, if you guys remember, is what transfers our fuel from the fueler back to the lander to give it some more extra fuel in case we use up too much. So until next time, guys, this is Malkuth1974. Have a great day. Hit that like button. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. This is Malkuth1974. Out of here.